The launch of the Iveco SOA in South Africa is a big affair with a total of 261 guests in attendance over the two days, including customers, dealers, Iveco staff and Iveco suppliers. After herding the guests into Iveco daily minibuses, they were transferred to the launch venue, a marquee tent which, inspired by an aviation theme, had been converted into a business class aircraft cabin. And finally, the new S-Way was revealed. I decided to get up close and personal with Iveco's new S-Way. Hey guys, this is Dieter Edmobrach and he's going to be telling us about the new S-Way. Dieter, why does it look the way it does? Well, thank you so much for asking. What's interesting is South Africa follows European spec trucks. That's the reason why our trucks are very limited with our length. So if we look at Australian and American trucks, you'll see they're much bigger, much longer. And that's why we've got this flat front end with the motor sitting underneath. Now I see there's a couple of features here. Can you tell me about them? Now that's where the really cool stuff starts coming into play. If we're looking at trucks nowadays, think about everything you're getting in a car, that's what we're getting in these trucks. Like so if we start looking at it, I've got adaptive cruise control. I've got emergency brake assist. We've got lane departure warnings. We've got LED headlights, cornering lights, automatic rain sensors, automatic light sensors. It's like you, you're buying a really good saloon car, but you're getting it in the truck. Yeah, exactly, that's what it's getting at. And then also, believe it or not, the trucks are designed with aerodynamics in mind. If I'm looking at this, I think to myself, where's the aerodynamics? Right. But as we zoom in, we'll start seeing how they're trying to get that airflow. Because it's all about fuel consumption that they're trying to get down. If we look closely towards the truck, we can see where all the cool stuff is hidden. At the bottom here, this is my adaptive cruise control, as well as my emergency brake assist. As I go up, there at the top is all the cameras that are picking up the lane departure warning, the automatic light sensors, the rain sensors, all of that. If I then come down to this side, look where those arrows are starting to get in for that fuel consumption, LED headlights, as well as bending lights. And then the last cool feature, wondering how you're gonna wash a truck's windscreen, built-in step. Boom! All right. Now as we walk around the side and we look at the truck, what you'll see is this is known as a 6x4. What that means is we've got six wheels, but four of the wheels have got power. Now I'm going to open the door. The fun stuff. This is where the party is at. All right. If we look at the trucks nowadays, it's all designed around rider comfort. Because the more comfortable the driver is, the less fatigue he gets and the longer he can last. So if I look firstly, on the side. Think about how they're hooking those trailers, those massive long trailers. Mm. Now this system here lets the truck, when I'm standing on the outside, reverse back, pull forward, what? drop the suspension down to hook it easier, or lift the suspension. So I'm standing on the outside, and this is a remote control to maneuver the whole truck. I love gadgets. Yes. This vehicle has got cooling seats and heated seats. You don't even get that in most vehicles in South Africa yet. The seat here is an air suspension seat, so what it means is Oh. for rider comfort so that makes the bumpy road much more convenient now looking inside uh, I see a lot of features uh, starting with the sunroof there what can you tell me about the cabin you'll see we've got sunroof that's automatically open and closed mm. mosquito nets blackout nets we've got mood lights for the evening if you're inside you know to set that mood up for whatever you want to do <laughs> we've got Apple CarPlay Android Auto oh. I've got a fridge freezer on the inside and about 10 USB ports. Now, after the driver has been driving for a long time and he wants to rest, uh, is there a place for him to sleep? There is. We've got a double bunk bed inside as well. It makes it just that bit more comfortable for the driver. All right. Jeepers weepers. Now, tell me about this uh, shiny little tank we've got here. So just an interesting fact if we're looking at trucks, this truck has now got a 540 litre tank, a standard, and you can add an optional 260 litre onto that. That gets us to about 800 litres of fuel we can put in. At the current fuel price, you're looking at about 17,600 Rand to fill this bad boy up. I decided to take the S-Way for a spin. Or at least I rode shotgun while one of their experienced driving instructors showed me the ropes. Auto, it's plain and simple, you just accelerate, it will shift gears by, by itself, it will downshift by itself as you, as you slow down. You can either drive it in, in auto mode or you can drive it manually, manually is 
simply just flick up the gears, there it will go down, flick it down and it will change back. Another one and it will shift back. You see, it will blurb the throttle for you, it will do everything. That's your engine braking, you can hear it. Yeah. Right. There I'm adding the retarder now and there you can you can feel you feel how the, how the retarder. That was only on stage two. Right. There's five stages. It's five stages. Right. Yeah. I must say, while we're going over certain humps, you look unfazed because you just, you're going with the seats. Right. Very important. We refer to something that's called NVH, noise, vibration and harshness. Now, because this is a long distance truck, we need to get it as comfortable as possible. Now, the first thing that people don't realize is to eliminate vibrations because vibrations makes you tired. Yeah, that makes sense. Tell me about the mirrors. I mean, there's two over here, there's another one there, there's one, there's, they're right. everywhere. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six mirrors that I need to cover and in front of me. So I've got seven points that I need to cover at all times and make sure what's going on. So yes, it does take a bit of, a bit of practice and you've got to be very, very alert. What do you need to do? So now I'm going to swerve. I'm going to go off the tar, full braking off the tar onto the gravel. Yeah, watch this now. Okay, so here we go. Right, hit the brakes, we can't stop in time, so we go off and we stop onto the gravel, and there we are. You can avoid accidents a lot like that. Yes. It stops us just as well as a car. Good as a car, yeah. But you need to have done this. If you haven't done this before, if you haven't been on training where we teach you to do this, you won't have the confidence to actually do it. Trust the technology and very few people get the chance to actually do it in a safe environment, to trust the technology. It actually made it a non-event, but we saved the life. We, we, we averted the accident. Guys, please take your training seriously because this is nothing to joke about.